Hi, my name is Tracy Cook. Join us for an enlightening conversation with a woman who's not only a leader in her field, but she's a game changer. She's blazing new trails and creating opportunities for others to follow. She is a servant leader, and you don't want to miss the valuable insights and wisdom that Mary Jo has to share with us today. This is the Faith-Based Women in Business podcast series as part of the podcast empire. So make sure that you subscribe and comment. Mary Jo, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Tracy. It's a real honor to be here. It is fabulous to have you. Now, recently I heard you speak and you were so warm and you were so inviting. You were so knowledgeable about how women go through certain changes and circumstances in their lives. And I'm just wondering, can you share a little bit more about who you are and where you're from? Well, I am currently living in Indianapolis, Indiana in kind of the middle of the United States, what we refer to as as the Midwest here. And uh, I have always thought of myself as being an adaptable person. But that really kind of put me to the test um, (laughs) when I received a phone call at work from a woman who happened to claim that she was having an affair with my husband. And I had been married at that point 44 years. I figured this was a hoax. We had rental properties and I thought this would be a marvelous way to get revenge if my husband were trying to to evict her or something. Uh, And everything checked out. So my world turned upside down at a point in life where I was really expecting it to really, you know, facing retirement at age 60, whatever, 64, whatever. And uh, I, everything that I believed I had to throw out on the table and pick it back up and decide uh, what I truly wanted to keep. It's also, of course, an opportunity to rebuild, uh, which I could do after a while. I, I Divorce was not part of my paradigm. It was not anything. I was surrounded by long-term marriages. My parents had been married almost 65 years. My grandparents, 66 years. My in-laws, that long you know, divorce was not on my radar screen. Absolutely. And it, uh, it really threw me. Indeed, it would. Indeed, it would, Mary Jo. And thank you very much for sharing that, that vulnerable journey as well, because when we share it helps someone else, right? And yeah. as a faith-based woman as well, you know, having to to pick up, um, you know, at a stage of your life where, like you said, we settling into, you know, pre-retirement. Um, mm-hmm. With your faith as well, what way do you believe your faith has equipped you with your unique strengths and perspectives that has helped you succeed in your business? In my business, I have... I was raised, I'm Catholic, and I was raised in a a family that um, really instilled the faith in me from um, not just uh, an external standpoint, but I saw my parents actually um, grit their teeth and trust God through some difficult times. And so I... I have always had a strong personal faith in God. I also believed uh, and had written about marriage from a biblical standpoint. I had not published that book, but I have ready to go a full book um, on 
this the beauty and sacredness of married love. And so I had to go back through my belief system. You know, if this is who I was in God's eyes as married, what did it mean if I took marriage out of the picture? And so I have owned several businesses. I, uh, I owned a document scanning company for 10 years and then sold it and headed up a division uh, for a not-for-profit to grow their version of a document scanning company. And during that time, we went through the Great Recession of 2008-2009. Um, and I had to exercise that faith a lot. That was pre-divorce. <laughs> Um, but you look at the world kind of falling down economically around you and clients pulling out and, uh, you know, document scanning is not considered a necessity. And, and it really did take faith to say, okay, can we hang on? And I had employees and I didn't want to hurt them. I didn't... I, in fact, we had one project we brought people in. Who, some of them had double master's degrees. They were soft, software engineers and accountants and uh, high level people, well-educated people who were simply one day they went into work, the next day they had no work. They had no job. And so they... 16 of them at one point were sitting around a big table. We had pulling staples out of documents. Now, can you imagine? It put bread on their table and, uh, and it provided encouragement and socialization and hope. And so, um, frankly, we went into debt staying in business. I probably should have closed the thing. But I look back at it and launched two children into the world through that business. And I still look at it as a way that God taught me not only many skills business-wise, but relationships, um, how to how to trust, how to deal with people in in good times, in bad times, in difficult situations with a, a, a diversity of people. So it, it it's an interesting ride. Absolutely. And um, I think when we do have employees as well, I mean, they're putting their lives in our hands sometimes and sometimes mm -hmm. it's within our control. Sometimes it's not. And hindsight, right. right? Hindsight gets us every single yeah. time. <laughs> it absolutely okay. does. And um, with business as well, uh, what are some specific ways that you maybe incorporate social responsibility into uh, business practices and the networks that you create? And how do you measure the impact of those effects? I believe that integrity means that you operate from the same value system, no matter what you do. Um, and I shouldn't be saying you, I should be saying I. When I, whether I'm in business or, or in my personal relationships or whatever, I'm accountable to that, that same level of integrity to, I don't wanna do anything within my business network or my family or my friends that isn't transparent and um, honoring to the people that I'm working with. Um, that to me is really, really important. I have dealt with people on a business level who have done some less than desirable things. 
that you would not, that I didn't anticipate based on how they came across on a personal level. And then to have somebody say, well, that's business. Didn't sit well. It didn't sit well. You know, to me, if there was a situation where, you know, I've done work and not been paid because my client had a change of circumstances and left town. <laughs> I mean, you know, and then you go after, you know, well, I'm in another state now. I don't have to pay you. Really? Mm. I mean, there's a moral obligation there that, that um, to me didn't sit well. And I didn't go after them or sue them or anything because that didn't sit well with me either. I wasn't going to get blood from a stone. So it, I think business dealings do have to be open and honest written agreements um, up front. And, and I expect that same integrity from, from my clients, from people I deal with. So integrity is everything. Um, yeah. We've only got, you know, it, I remember back when, when I was a child, you know, your handshake was your word. You know, yes. as, you know, as we've evolved through technology and contracts and, and courts and legal obligations, but our handshake is our word. It, it's our integrity. Yes. And that's what I love about this faith-based podcast series, because it's really brought to light how much our values plays a role in absolutely everything we do in business and in personal and um, have you ever um, faced a situation being a faith-based person where, uh, you know, your integrity or values have been um, questioned or your beliefs um, uh, about how you operate, um, mm -hmm. whether in, in business or personal situations, and how do you navigate that situation? I've had several Um and I'm, I'm going to go back to the, the document scanning, which is no longer part of my life, but because, because I did own that business and I had such a long history with it. Um, I employed a lot of young women, including my daughter. And I had an opportunity to bid on a job with the state patrol, the police, um, and learned that it involved photographs of um, crime scenes and documents about some pretty horrific things. And, um, you know, I probably could have gotten the job. We were a women-owned business, a small business. We, we, were, we had an excellent reputation. And I thought, you know, there is no way to prepare those documents for scanning without having a solid look on it, you know? And I didn't want these young women to have to be affected by either the written documentation or the photos. And so I turned down the opportunity to bid. I also turned down um, recently, I mean, I, I edit and, uh, help people get their books into print. And I turned down uh, working with a book that, that uh, didn't align with my value system. And I don't want to sound like a prude with that. I don't, um, it was so far out of my wheelhouse um, that, that I, I didn't feel like I could properly edit that and, and uh, guide the author in the directions she could go for publicity and, and you know, other um, avenues. And so I was open with her about that. And, and I 
you know, suggested some other options for her. And she actually uh, told me that she really appreciated me being honest with her and that, you know, values were important to her and she respected the fact that I was willing to stand up and, and nicely, you know, turn her down as this was not a good fit. And communication is the key, right? We, uh-huh, uh-huh. we, we don't want to be people pleasers. We want to be able to have a voice, especially if we're a woman in business. We need our yes. voices heard, but we don't have to be aggressive. We don't have to be, um, you know, putting that other person down. We can still have those effective communications and it ch- helps change people's perspectives as well. I I love that you uh you brought that that up um in in such a way that you could see both sides of the story as well. That was absolutely wonderful. And um, have you ever had um your faith provide you with a unique network of support, or have you had to seek that out? I've been very fortunate to come across friends at all stages of my life who uh, became mentors in some cases, uh, a a like-minded support system, uh, people who could also challenge me to expand my, my belief system so that I can, and that's still happening. <laughs> that's still happening. To be able to um, embrace and love people who are very different from me and from what I'm used to in my circle, my little world. And, and to be able to, as you said, have those difficult conversations in ways that are non-confrontational and, and non-defensive. I was recently at, at an event, um, at one of my coaches, we've become a very close-knit group. And we do some uh, on-site, four four on-site events a year. And so, you know, you get to know these people in their little Zoom boxes. (laughs) And to meet them in person is wonderful. There is one event that is transformational. And we had an opportunity to have several people there who were um, diverse in the widest sense of the word. And um, and we had two different opportunities to have conversations that were probably, probably haven't been held anywhere in the world because we had put in place a process at that event for communicating with each other and and being able to say hard things, ask hard questions, and listen to the other person, actually listen to where they were coming from and understand their viewpoints. It was really enlightening. I love how I'm so grateful for. I love when you said about the ask cards. I, I I reminded me of a conference I was at and they had the ask cards and I'd never seen that before. That is just such a great thing to surround yourself with so many like-minded people and still stretch um, that yeah. that comfort yeah. zone almost of embracing, you know, diversi- diversification and really accepting mm-hmm. people and meeting people where they are, Mary Jo, because you're just so good at that. You've got such a, a calming energy and such an approachable manner and Thank you're just you. such a kind person and that just shines right off you. Um, and that's why you're part of this Faith-Based Women in Business series. We need somebody like you as part of a group 
because you bring to the table the calmness and the lived experience and the wisdom and those enlightening conversations. And what advice would you give to other women in business that are seeking a strong support system? I think it's very important to understand. I I used to go through my business networks, go to my meetings and, and be among all these people and feel like I knew nothing. I had the worst case of imposter syndrome and I kept it quiet until one day at a a large meeting of powerful women business owners, I voiced it to somebody and she said, (laughs) because I said, I don't have a business degree. I don't, I'm a, I'm an RN, I'm a nurse, you know, (laughs) I ended up in business. And, and she said to me, none of us do. None of us thought we would be doing this when we grew up. We're all doing something we didn't plan on doing. You're not the only person feeling that everybody is. And, you know, that was very freeing. So to understand that, that you, you do bring value, you do have value and your value does not depend on any human relationship, whether or not, you know, your, your family of origin built you up or your marriage or no matter what you've done, no matter what has been done to you, your value, your intrinsic value as a human being is far beyond anything you could imagine. You are priceless. And it's, it's so important to understand that identity. I'm a child of God. You're a child of God. That's the only relationship that is not subject to change. Things change because of circumstances or choices or whatever, but that relationship is the ultimate definition. And... God created each one of us to be unique and he loves us just as we are. Not I'm going to love you if, or I'm going to love you when, or, you know, if you would just do this much more, I would love you. No, God can't love us any more or any less. And, and that is such a hard concept because we humans don't love like that. But God is love and God can't not love. I love that. I love that, Cher. It's all about love, hope, and empathy. If we we can change the world, literally, if we just yes. spend two seconds to meet people where they're at, to show mm-hmm. love, to have respect, and to embrace people in what they are. Mary Jo, you've had so many golden nuggets that you have shared here today. That's why you're definitely blazing new trails. What kind of message would you like to leave the audience on today? I just want every woman listening, every person listening to find joy every day, find beauty and find joy, no matter what's happening in your life. Look for, you know, they say something to be grateful for. And sometimes that's very difficult. If you can look for beauty in one thing. Um, I do work with women who've been through divorce, particularly after long-term divorce. I have written a book, You Are Still Beloved, When Your Long-Term Marriage Ends in Divorce. And um And I also have a course um, that I'm happy to offer people. I, I invite anyone who has been through a divorce, regardless of how long, because you can go for decades and not recover well. 
uh, to just book a call with me. I think you have my my Calendly link there that uh, just if we can make one breakthrough for you to just lay out a little bit of a clearer path, I'm happy to do that. Oh, that is absolutely wonderful. We will be sharing where to connect with Mary Jo in the show notes below. You will see her Calendly link, book a call, have a conversation. You never know where it will lead. We're all about transformations, connections, and changing perspectives. This is the Faith-Based Women in Business podcast series inside the podcast empire. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Share with your friends and have some enlightening conversations with them as well. Mary Jo, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you as our featured guest today, and we'll see you on the next Faith-Based in Women episode. 